All right, guys, it's the talk of the town today, so I'm going to talk about it. Jason Aldean is probably the most talked about figure in the world of the entertainment industry today. Country singer just released a song called Try That in a Small Town. They just put out the music video, and this guy is getting torched by mainstream media for being a racist, for putting out racist and hateful content, particularly with the video that he put out. And the reason why I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my opinion about this, I'm gonna share with you guys some interesting news about um, really just this whole story behind this country singer, this song. Why is it so controversial? Why is there so much hate around it? And uh, is there a prophetic implication to what's going on in America, really in the world, through what we're seeing happen here? Um, I'm gonna share uh, briefly that. The reason why I care about this stuff, guys, you guys, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I'm a Christian content creator. My vision, my mission is simple, to reveal the glory of God on every glowing screen. I'm not just an online pastor, but I've been in digital media for the past 12 years. And my desire is to see God redeem media because I know that the enemy is using it for evil and God wants to use it for good. Can I get an amen from somebody? And so I want to I want to speak into this because entertainment Entertainment is what teaches us values, whether we recognize it or not. We say, oh, it's just entertainment. No, it's not. It actually trains up the next generation and what those values are. And then the media comes along and enforces those values. And then politics, which kind of runs downstream from entertainment, politics ends up codifying those values. So the entertainment industry, really important to talk about. Okay, without further ado, Jason Aldean, this song, despite being labeled as a, a hateful song, a racist song. This song is currently number one in the world, according to iTunes charts. I mean, it's literally number one, not just in the country category, but literally the number one song in America right now. And so you're seeing this interesting polarization where you have most of the mainstream media is um, condemning this song, condemning this music video, yet you have a lot of people responding in opposition and showing favor to it. So um, I'm having the video, you're probably already seeing it right now. The video itself is playing in the background. I've, re I've removed the music for copyright's sake, but I will read you the lyrics for this right here. I want you, I want to read the lyrics of the song and then um, we're going to listen, we're going to read what the Washington Post has to say about it. We're going to read what Jason Aldean has to say in response to the, all of the world's flack because you can look it up, like just look up Jason Aldean, try that in a small town and you'll see Newsweek, The Guardian, Washington Post, likely New York Times, all of these mainstream media outlets blasting this project. But this is what the this is what the lyrics of the song actually say. It says, sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk, carjack an old lady at a red light, pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store. You think it's cool? Well, act a fool if you like. Cuss out a cop, spit in his face, stomp on the flag and light it up. Yeah, you think you're tough. Well, try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Around here, we take care of our own. You cross that line. It won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't try that in a small town. And it's kind of like the same theme kind of throughout the rest of the lyrics. Um, I'll put the link for the lyrics so you can go read those yourself. But uh, as you can see with the video clips, he's performing this song in front of a Tennessee courthouse. I think it's in Columbia, Tennessee. And they're showing all of these images of the riots that took place in 2020 when it was absolute chaos and lawlessness, a lot of which was spurred on because of the media continuing to push out, um, and whether or not rightfully so, continuing to push out this narrative of this, this racial divide in America, particularly around police brutality, and you have all of these people enraged and going and feeling justified in just burning down neighborhoods, looting um, local communities. Literally, if you remember Kenosha, Wisconsin, literally setting entire car dealerships on fire. Small businesses, private businesses are just completely demolished in some of these areas. And so you are also, if, if any of you are on Twitter, uh, being a platform that's like hyper free speech for better or for worse. You might have stumbled upon some content where it just is showing the lawlessness that's happening in these bigger cities where shoplifting, looting, 
the straight up like broad daylight violence is is occurring it seems like and being accelerated at just such an ex- such a massive level right now and here's what's interesting to me as i read these lyrics and my initial reaction is this has nothing to do with race this has nothing to do with uh, really being a bully this is like if anything a self defense message this is a message of hey we don't deal with lawlessness where we're from um, we, if that happens in our town, we're going to snuff that flame out real quick. Okay. I, uh, to me, from what I read here and what I see, uh, in the visuals, to me, this is just a firm warning. Hey, we want peace. We want, we want to, uh, we want to ha- have prosperity. We want to, you know, celebrate differences. But if, if there's going to be a level of lawlessness, um, robbery, violence against the innocent, we're going to we're going to shut that thing down real quick. I I mean I don't I hope I'm not blind here guys, but just trying to take an, take a an objective look at what the lyrics say and that's that's kind of my take from it, okay? But here's the criticism that you see a lot of these um mainstream news outlets saying and they're really centering around the location that this was shot. So this is what the Washington Post had to say. It says the Maury County Courthouse was the site of a lynching, okay? The point that they're trying to make was that this was filmed at the site of a lynching. It looks like back in 1927, it says Aldean's performance backdrop is the Maori County courthouse, which at times appears to be on fire as images of burning American flags are projected onto it. It's the same building where a mob hanged 18 year old Henry Shoate, Shoate, uh, forgive me, don't know how to pronounce that last name, from the balcony in 1927. Horrific. Can we all agree? That's there's who wants that? The teen had been accused of attacking a white girl who had never identified him as her assailant and those and whose mother begged the mob to let him stand trial. We actually have had I live in Omaha, Nebraska. We've had something similar happen in Omaha as well uh, years ago. So super, super sad. Um, Columbia is also the inside of an infamous 1946 race riot that nearly resulted in the lynching of future Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. This small town full of good old boys, is one of the lyrics, as Aldean sings, is in his home state of Tennessee, which was scandalized in the 1990s by an annual law enforcement gathering called the Good Old Boys Roundup that featured racial slurs and simulated lynching. While Aldean highlighted Columbia and its courthouse in a behind-the-scenes feature, the music video's producers say he didn't choose the location, which they portrayed as innocuous and i'm uh, not gonna lie i had to look up what innocuous means i'll show you right here it means not harmful or offensive like they chose this location not to have some sort of like uh, overt symbolism that they were trying to like weave a message in there and here's what i have to say immediately from that like could they be telling the truth could it be that there wasn't some sort of racist undertone that they were trying to promote by having at that location because when you watch the footage, there's no, um, you, I mean, it's hard. It to me, it's hard to make a case that it's about racism when it's. It seems pretty evident that they are combating this lawless kind of spirit, this lawless agenda that's being, you know, that's running rampant in the world right now. And even with the lyrics, but I here's what here's what frustrates me is this is purely speculation. What they're doing is they're taking an element from this video. They're putting a microscope on this part. And, you know, they could be making, uh, they could be doing this with a variety of other things about the music video. But I'm seeing this argument all over the place about the courthouse. It's entirely speculative. There's no direct evidence that they used it for that reason. And I wouldn't say that there's anything else in the video that communicates that they they support what happened in 1927 or in 1946. To me, the message of the video, the message of the song is we want we want to return to some sort of uh, some sense of normalcy, some sense of uh, community um, protection, some sort some sense of um, just community camaraderie, of loving your neighbor, of, of being of of really taking care of those in your community. And not allowing the the love of many to grow cold, which I'm going to share um, why I feel like this is kind of prophetic in a sense. But I want to show you what Jason Aldean had to say to all of the scrutiny. This is what he had texted or tweeted. He said, in the past 24 hours, I've 
been accused of releasing a pro lynching song, a song that has been out since May. So correct, uh, corrected. This song was out since May. The criticism is really, I guess, around the actual, the video and was subject to the comparison that I direct quote, was not too pleased with the nationwide BLM protests. Okay. Maybe it's worth uh, saying that you can agree with the sentiment that Black Lives Matter, as all lives matter, all people are created in, uh, uh, in the image of God. All, all people have inherent value, so thus Black Lives do matter. But regarding these protests that went on, protests, a lot of them were pro peaceful protests. I'm imagining crazy stuff in the comments right now, so I, wanna, uh, I want to qualify all of that. Were there peaceful protests all over the country? Yes, I know people who were a part of those peaceful protests. However, were those peaceful, some of those peaceful, a lot of those peaceful protests used as a means to destroy communities? Yes, absolutely. Like it was all over the news last year or in 2020. It was, it was outrageous. These references are not only meritless, but dangerous. I agree. This, there is not a single lyric in that song that references race or points to it. And there isn't a single video clip that isn't real news footage. And while I can try and respect others, well, I'll say that there's, there's probably a couple clips that were B-roll and stock footage, like the close-ups of the Molotov cocktail, but the actual like violent acts themselves, I would believe him with that. But um, just trying to be a critical thinker here, guys, trying to, trying to be fair um, with all sides of it. And while I can try and respect others to have their own interpretation of a song with music, this one goes too far. Because what this is doing, I agree, when he's saying that this is meritless and dangerous, what this is doing is it's like the commentary from the mainstream media about this being a racist thing is now pushing two communities or two philosophies, two people groups, not really just even two people groups, really two like psychographics apart even further and creating further division when really this is about it's this not a one uh, a this is not a race versus race commentary, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know how you can read the lyrics and listen to the song. And I'll show you just an interesting reaction soon, too, from people that I think you're going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they say. Regardless, I agree that this is, the commentary around this, it's not based in fact, but it's based in complete speculation and is being communicated widespread is, is an absolute tool in Satan's hand to pin people against each other and wreak more havoc. He goes on to say, as so many pointed out, I was present at Route 91 where so many lost their lives. And I think that was the, the shooting in Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken. And our community recently suffered another heartbreaking tragedy. No one, including me, wants to continue to see senseless headlines or families ripped apart. Which is why I believe he made the, movie, the, the video. I believe that's why he wrote the song. The song is about like saying, yo, like we're, we're not going to stand up for senseless violence which is very ironic when you look at some other music that's being promoted and propagated in the mainstream media um, without any sort of conscience regarding it. Try that in a small town for me refers to the feeling of a community that I had, had, that I had grown up in, I think that's what he meant to say, where we took care of our neighbors regardless of differences of background or belief. Amen. Because they were our neighbors and that was above any differences. My political views have never been something I've hidden from, and I know that a lot of us in this country don't agree on how we get back to a sense of normalcy where we go uh, at least a day without a headline that keeps us up at night. But the desire for it, too, that's what this song is about. I mean, the, the brother is, is, is being as clear as I think he can be. So what are we going to do? Are we going to judge his motive? Are we going to say, um, are we going to tell him what he meant by this song? When the lyrics, I think, are, are pretty much clearly pointing to what he's saying here. Are we going to judge his motive behind the video clips when it says right here that he was pulling real video clips of uh, real news articles? Are we going to judge his motive or are we going to give him the benefit of the doubt and, and uh, leave it at that? I just, it's so mind blowing to me how much there is like, people are so free to judge another person's motive, even when they're being explicit about their intentions for why they say something or why they believe something 
But um, to me, it's just, it, it's, I'll, I'll tell you like my spiritual opinion at the end of this, but I want to show you this. This, this is kind of interesting. This is a reaction from some brothers. Uh, these guys, a uh, Car Cartier family, they have a really big YouTube channel and they do a lot of reactions. So I'm going to um, kind of skip past the part of the music video that they actually reacted to. And I want you to hear their reaction. Just know you can go watch the music video, go watch their reaction video itself. I'll put the link for that in the description as well. But I want you to see how they respond to this video because apparently this song and this music video are racist uh, against my brothers and uh, the black community. But this is what they had to say. And I know that they, their opinion might not represent anybody else's opinion, but I hope this encourages you that there's people who are going to who are willing to be critical thinkers and not just regurgitate a narrative that mainstream media communicates to them. This is what they have to say. They really trying to cancel this shit. It's really making me more high. Yeah, that's all. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't talk. You shouldn't talk me that now. I'm getting more pissed. I mean, it's been pretty viral right now. Everybody's talking about it. Man, I'm already on the internet like this. this. Is all, I like. I, was, I told you I was bumping. This is this song, song, bro. He just said he pretty much saying don't do all that crazy stuff in the cool spot. Yeah, What's up, man? See, y'all think y'all tough? Come try it over here, boy. If, yeah. If, you're, if you cancel man. this song, that's something wrong with you. I'm tired of that crap, man. Soft. We anti-woke. So. They like the song. If you like the fact that people are getting stirred up about this song, it's firing them up. If you canceled this song, there's something wrong with you. I want you to go on to listen to this part. This is kind of crazy. They go on to make a a um a comparison to how this song is being demonized while while another song is being celebrated by the culture. And this song that they're gonna show really represents a ton of other crazy songs out there that are uh, literally brainwashing the next generation to think that glorifying violence is cool. Watch this. The same, bro. They really put back in blood. I shot up everywhere they would. Yeah, you know who took this shit from you. Come get it back in blood. And did it, my dog, on this. They don't sit there and let them jig boots run their own self. They give it up. I'm going to prove this message. I like it. They put back in blood. Shiesty mask on. The, and the ski mask with the black kids running around with the ski mask? Yes, they're gonna promote yeah. that and tell my boy Jason he owe it for saying he comes to my town. He's kind of going against the woke, man. So, I, I mean. so you, you know what they're saying? They're saying that like the entertainment industry, the mainstream media, they are promoting the music that promotes senseless violence. And then you have a country singer who says, if you try to do that senseless violence in my community, you better watch out. And then that guy gets demonized. And then that song gets demonized. It's just backwards, bro. Just the, and this is, as, as it says in Isaiah, that we're, we're living in times where people call evil good and good evil. But there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. I'm telling you there's hope. But stick around to the end because I'll show that hope sec shortly. I mean, I'm a what you mean? Me personally, I'm anti woke. Because he's probably against protesting. Yeah. And speaking out your. Man, that's not. We just seen what they didn't want. Nigga just took a woman car on that bitch. That's protesting. Okay. <laughs> my man, my mans are going crazy right now. Um, again, there's a difference between protesting and rioting. You want to have an opinion. You want to walk around with a sign. You want to get a group of people together to assemble. You have a First Amendment right in this country to do that. And I actually celebrate your right to disagree. With me, with this video, with this song, uh, with the, these guys, you, I celebrate your right to disagree because this is how we move forward and heal as a country. We move forward and heal by having civil conversation and disagreement. We don't heal when we have complete lack of maturity and demonize anybody that doesn't agree with us. And especially when we put words in their mouth and we judge them. And I'm telling you, like I, this, I think the reason why this fires me up so much is because I've personally been judged by people really close to me who don't, don't even, they wouldn't listen to what I would have to say, but because I might fit under a certain group of uh, a certain demographic, all of a sudden I carry all these labels that are not, uh, that discredit anything they would have to say. That is, that, it's just ignorance. That's the, the irony is that's what creates echo chambers and that's what creates senseless violence and uh, ultimately racism. So I want to uh, fast forward to this comment here. I think that was really interesting. And then uh, I'll wrap it up with a, kind of a spiritual commentary. No, if, if, 
He didn't say nothing. If the world is trying to cancel this, we're in bad position. I right think now. if you knew you were trying to cancel this, you never lived in a small town. You don't know understand. He said, if the world is trying to cancel this, we're in trouble. I, I don't think I could agree anymore. This is what it says in Matthew chapter 24, verses 9 through 14, and then we'll close with this. And this is something that we got to be, this is the spiritual application here, because what I don't want to do, I, I, I feel very convicted to speak into what's happening culturally in the world. To, to comment on things happening in the news, to comment on things happening in the entertainment industry. I, I feel like it's part of my call as a Christian. We can't just be siloed in the four walls of the church um, and not bring, not contend for the welfare of our city, as it says in Jeremiah, and be a city on a hill and let our light shine before men. Because we're called to be salt of the earth, which means we preserve the decaying world around us as Christians. Um. But at the same time, we got to point people to the spiritual reality. And so here's the reality. This is what Jesus said about the end times, meaning the, like the time that would happen right before he comes back to judge the earth, which is coming sooner than we think, guys. And he's going to judge the world. He, he might have come into the world as a lamb, but he's coming back as a lion. And it's going to be brutal for those that don't know him. This is what he says in Matthew chapter, again, 24, verse 9 through 13. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. We see in that. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. I'm just going to go out on a limb right now and say those fa false prophets, that category, includes the mainstream media that is propagating lies. I'm not saying that everybody in the mainstream media is at fault. I'm not saying that everyone in the mainstream media has that intent, but I see how Satan is using the mainstream media because what's a prophet? A prophet is somebody that hears from God and declares righteousness or judgment on his behalf so that people come further into the kingdom. And what's your, what you're seeing right now is false prophecy, false messaging about what's righteous and what's unrighteous. And you're seeing it at a global scale. So it says many false prophets, the people that are propagating this garbage and, and sowing this discord and leading people astray, they are deceiving many. And these false prophets, they might not even call themselves prophets, but they are absolutely creating and, and promoting false prophecies from the evil one. There's no question about it. Verse 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Focus on that. That's even what this video the guy's, uh, Jason's video, music video is trying to combat. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We're seeing that. I feel like I've seen that more since 2020 to now than ever before. Like in 2020, we stopped really treating people with respect and dignity because we were so fearful of the, uh, you know, the giant uh, bug that went around. If you guys remember, remember that 2020? And we started to like to demonize people way way more quickly because we were driven by fear and fear makes people super irrational and that's what we're seeing we're seeing more lawlessness and we're seeing the love of many grow cold but listen to this but he who endures to the end shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached the gospel of the kingdom guys this is my focus right now the gospel of the kingdom the good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And here's my message to you guys. I love America. I, I love this country. I have never loved this country more than I do right now. I love the United States of America, but my citizenship is in, is in the kingdom of heaven before it's in the kingdom of the United States of America. And that's where you and I need to put our hope. Our hope is not in saving America. Well, like, should we contend for the welfare of our country? Yes, absolutely. We should contend for godly values. We should contend for righteousness. But we need to make sure that we don't fall into the trap of thinking that Jesus is going to check our party affiliation when we enter, enter eternity, when we cross the threshold of this life into the, into the next life. He's not going to check your party affiliation. What the Father is going to look at is, what did you do with the sacrifice my son gave for you on that cross? What are you going to do with the blood of the lamb that was shed for your sin? Did you believe in what he did for you? Or did you try to do life your own way? Did you reject the good news of what Jesus did? 
Or did you receive the good news that he died for you and rose again that you might inherit this eternal life, not by your good works, but by what he simply gave you, okay? That is, the, that is what we need to be fighting for in these days. And this is what I'm telling you guys. We're going to see it more and more and more and more. We better buckle up. The mainstream media, the enemy is going to use these devices. He's going to use the TV. He's going to use the internet. He's going to use media to brainwash the masses, to deceive the masses. As we just read right here, these false prophets are going to raise up communicating these messages that, that, st uh, that steer people away from the truth that will set them free. And we got to be, we got to have our antennas up, guys. We need to be spiritually aware. We need to ask for the Holy Spirit to give us discernment. And we need to fight to preach the good news. Because you know what? I, we, what we're fighting up against right now, guys, I hope this will preach to somebody. We're fighting a spirit. This is a spirit of lawlessness. This is the spirit of the Antichrist that is roaming through the earth right now and is preparing for the true lawless one, the Antichrist himself, to take his throne in, uh, in the temple in Jerusalem. It, that, this is what it says in, in uh, Revelation. And before that day comes, guys, we, uh, <laughs> we just got to make sure that we aren't being deceived by that spirit. We cannot reason with that spirit. You do not reason with a spirit, you do, especially not the spirit of lawlessness. We preach the kingdom of God. We preach the word of God because the gospel of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. We do not need behavior modification. We don't need to, we don't need to modify political preferences. This world, this country needs a heart transplant. This country needs the stony heart taken out of this rebellious heart and needs to be restored with the heart of flesh. This country needs an encounter with the living Christ needs an encounter with the Holy Spirit who has come to convict the world of sin and the judgment that's to come so that we might be adopted into the family of God, rescued from the kingdom of darkness and brought into his marvelous light. Amen. If you want to disagree, let me know in the comments. Happy to uh, see any of that, but please like this video if you did like it. Subscribe and consider becoming a member to help support it. We'll see you guys in the next video.